Hi students, I wanted to make a video to talk about simultaneous equilibria. This is something that we touched on in class, but I think was a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna do one example here, which is looking at the impact of adding an acid when you have a slightly soluble salt or an insoluble salt that contains the conjugate base of a weak acid. It's a little bit much, but we'll go through it one step at a time. So essentially we're gonna be talking about the salt BAF2. And BAF2, our KSP equilibrium reaction, will look like this. Where we have barium fluoride, the solid, and it's dissolving and dissociating into barium ions and two fluoride ions. And the KSP value for this is one times 10 to the minus six. So it's not very soluble at all. Only a tiny little bit will dissolve if you put this in water. Now the key here is that fluoride ions are actually the conjugate base of a weak acid, hydrofluoric acid. So uh, we can use the Ka and I'm gonna write it here backwards, you'll see why in a minute, but um, I'm gonna write it here backwards where I have two fluoride ions plus two hydrogen ions makes two HF. Now you'll see this is just the Ka written in reverse. If we wrote it the other way with HF on the left, it would be Ka, but because it's not, it's one over the Ka. And you'll also notice that I multiplied by two throughout, so I've got to square my uh, value here. So this will be one over, and the Ka value is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus four. So that'll be our K for that. Now, here's the deal. If both of these equilibria are happening at the same time in the same beaker, because we've added some acid to that beaker, well, then we can write an overall reaction here. Our fluoride ions cancel out. So we'll get our barium fluoride solid plus our acid. And we'll make barium ions and hydrofluoric acid. And our new K will be our KSP over the Ka squared. And if I calculate that out, I think we get 2.29. That's our new K value. So the first thing that we should notice is that adding some acid here actually makes a really big difference in terms of the solubility of that salt. Before, the KSP was just one times 10 to the minus six, but now by adding some acid, we've actually increased it by six orders of magnitude. Um, so it's significantly larger when we have the acid there. And the reason is that the salt contains this fluoride ion, which is the conjugate base of the weak acid. And that means there's some propensity for it to go back together and make HF here. And in a sense, if you think about just the top reaction here, it's like removing our fluoride ions. And if we remove the product, we expect the equilibrium to drive to the right. And that's exactly what we're seeing here, where our K value now for the overall reaction is much larger. Okay, so this is our this is our new K value for this new reaction that we've written. And if we write the expression, we'd get K equals our barium times our hydrofluoric acid squared divided by our H plus squared. And that's our new expression for our K for this reaction. So now we might ask a follow-up question like, what pH of a buffered solution would we need in order to dissolve 0.1 moles of BAF2 in one liter of that solution? Okay, so 
if we're going to dissolve 0.1 moles of BAF2 in one liter of buffered solution, what should the pH be of the buffer? And whenever we say there's a buffered solution, uh, essentially we're just telling you that's the concentration of H plus and it stays constant, it stays relatively constant. Um, so we can ignore any changes to that. So if this is uh, our question that we're wondering about, well, we know if we have 0.1 moles of BAF2, that would result in 0.1 moles of Ba2 plus ions and 0.2 moles of HF because of the stoichiometry here. So for our K, we can plug in our values here, 0.1 moles of our barium and 0.2 moles of our hydrofluoric acid. And the question will be, what's our H plus concentration? So if we solve here our H plus concentration, will just be 0 0.042 molar. And we want to know what the pH is of that, so we take the negative log and we get our pH equals 1.38. So if we wanted to dissolve 0.1 moles of barium fluoride in one liter of a buffered solution, we would want a buffer with a pH of 1.38 in order to make that dissolve. So a couple of important things that we've talked about in this video. One is recognizing if you know a KSP, you actually know this whole chemical e equation that's written out up here um, that's associated with the KSP. And also if you know the Ka, you know the chemical equation here and you can manipulate it like you could turn it around or multiply it by two or whatever you need it to do in order to get it to work for the overall reaction that you're trying to get to. Number two, um, we are going, we're combining these reactions and there's rules for that. We reversed the Ka, which is the inverse here, and we multiplied by two, which makes it squared. And when we add the reactions together, we're multiplying those Ks together. So that's how we get our overall K here. Um, and then the last thing is, you know, what's the implication of this? Obviously, this will be way more soluble in an acidic solution because the K is much larger than it was otherwise. And uh, we can figure out what kind of pH buffer would be most effective for dissolving this. Um, just substituting in here the values for the things that we wanted to dissolve and solving for the concentration of H+. So I hope that's helpful to you. This is a simultaneous equilibria for KSP and Ka. I'm going to make a different video that will have it for Ksp and Kf uh, for a formation constant. Thanks very much.